Hey guys, how are you? What's up? What's up? How are you? What's going on? It's me, your boy Hebot, your action figure enthusiast and video game aficionado. I'm back trying to do a quick video on my thoughts on what happened with uh, Google Stadia. And, um, you know, I'm trying to do this real quick. I don't have really much to say other than the obvious, but. Uh, yes, we all know Google uh, Stadia has confirmed that they closed down, you know, uh, uh, their internal developing houses. Uh, and it's never a good thing when things like this happen because obviously people are left out of work. Um, but the good thing is that there's always um, options in the video game space and community with other teams still hiring. Um, so it's always cool that, you know, they can kind of pick up and help these people out in the, in some cases. And in some cases, obviously, you can't. But I think Stadia's problem basically is that it was a, a product that came out without its own identity, meaning it had nothing new to offer in the table. And it just completely proves that it doesn't matter how much money you have. It's not really about the money when you make want to make an impact or an impression or if you want to get some type of notoriety. It's all about uh, execution, uh, innovation, what you have to offer that perhaps you didn't see before somewhere else. Uh, you know, in the case of Stadia, there basically were very little... Uh, to be excited about as far as their own intellectual properties, which is new IPs of AAA caliber or even single A or double A caliber. There wasn't no real innovation as far as what they were going to do. You know, 4K was something that we've already seen through Microsoft and, you know, now Sony. And then obviously uh, their services were completely tied down to just being online and yet you still had to buy the games individually at full price with no real ownership. And that's a big turnoff because most people don't want to be locked down to the internet in order to access their library. That's why things like Game Pass or even PSN Now, they work because they have, you pay for the service, but you're not paying ownership prices. You're paying monthly. And you have accessibility to the whole catalog, not just one game, like in the case of Stadia. I never personally had it or tried it, so I'm not saying that it was a bad product by all stretch of the imagination. That's not what I'm saying for those who think that I'm, you know, coming in here to talk bad about it. Not at all. I'm just trying to put perspective in the situation. And the truth of the matter is that when Xbox first came to the scene, for example, back in... The PlayStation, you know, back in the PlayStation 2 era, it was the first time that we had the console delivering a bunch of things that was never done uh, in the and before in the perspective of a PC realm, right? So we had a very powerful console for only $299, which was cheap in comparison to what you got with PlayStation 2. We had built-in hard drive that was something that was never really uh, done before um, because it was always separate. You had to pay for it separate. You had to add it separate. And you were able to, you know, save your game files there or to download CD music and listen to them while you played your games. Um, it had uh, the same power and equivalency to high-end PCs at that time. So you were playing games that you could only play on PC at that time that were only possible to play on PC. But now you were able to play them also on consoles like, you know, uh, Knights of the Old Republic and, and Counter-Strike and things of that nature at the quality of PC standards. Also, keeping in mind, they used a lot of new things that were uh, introduced by other companies, but that were utilizing them in their own way, like the four-player port. You know, they gave you the first time ever for, you know, in that time, services like Xbox Live. 
which started on OG. Uh, that wasn't something that was known at that time or big. Uh, plus big exclusive IPs like Halo and games like Bloodwake and their own sports division, which was very appealing because it was another option as opposed to just having games from EA on PlayStation or, you know, the Nintendo GameCube at that time. So, so they brought a lot to the mix and table. Plus, they had third-party exclusives from big names and big IPs and companies that were still big at that time, like Sega, with the 14-game deals with games like Jet Set Radio Future, Panzer Dragoon Ortha, you know, Otagi 1 and 2, Headhunters, Toe Jam and Earl 3, Gun Valkyrie, um, a lot of games, House of the Dead 3, right? 3? Crazy Taxi 3. A lot of games that were only available, and to this day are still only available, on OG. Dino Crisis 3, right? Games uh, like, uh, um, trying to think of another exclusive off the top of my head, Torque. Um, a lot of good, good gems, or hidden gems, and good games that only are playable and that were only playable on the Xbox, you know, um, OG console at that time when it launched. And, and then it was so powerful, right? You were playing the best version, essentially, of all those games. You were playing the best version of all those games. Um, like when you played Warriors, it was the best version. It introduced 1080i for the very first time. Dolby Digital, Dolby, um, Adobe DTS, I think it was, or Adobe, uh, D Adobe Digital Surround, something like that. Um, correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments. The point was, it was in, it was introducing a bunch of innovative things that were never done before, right? That were never done before. I'm trying to make sure that the camera stays focused, folks. Sorry about that. There we go. It was doing innovative things that were brand new to, to the gaming scene under the console wing. And this is what helped them make a mark. They only sold 23 million consoles as opposed to the 120 plus that PlayStation did. But they came out late in the game and they were new to the table, right? So they still did their little mark and then obviously transitioned to 360 where they made their biggest mark where they overthrown PlayStation in the America, right? in perception and being real players in the gaming industry and space because as we all know even myself included when I first heard them coming into the scene um oh my Jesus excuse me ladies and gentlemen when I heard, first heard them about coming into the gaming space and scene I really thought that they weren't going to do well because they were just known as a PC company. I didn't really think they were going to make an impact. I was hesitant. It was really the idea and the deal that they did with Sega that sold me on the Xbox brand because it felt like the extension of Dreamcast 2, which we all know later was confirmed was the original idea behind it. And even then, to this point, it's taken Microsoft many, many years to be able to get recognition, respect, and being seen as a real player in the gaming industry, even though they make the most money, right? Because it's all about perception as well. It's not just, you know, having the most money. It's if you have perception, then people kind of trust you, or I trust the brand, or trust the history, right? Uh, which is something that Nintendo, obviously, because they're the pioneers, they're the originators, like Sega from back then, and, you know, Sony with their years of being in, in the space as well, from publishers to then, the you know, releasing the console, uh, their first console, PS1, right? Um, that they established, basically, right? Um, and it was also their name, because they were popular within the entertainment business. People trusted the Sony name and brand, because they were the number one in the world at that time. Uh, and I don't mean video games, I mean electronics in general. Uh, plus the movie space that they also have. So yeah, so I think that is the biggest reason and and in part and why Stadia couldn't make a mark. And yes, it's still open. 
it's still gonna support third party games as a service, like another option, like you would on Game Pass or PSN. But I don't see it getting as much support, obviously, as Sega or Nintendo, I mean, as PlayStation, Sony, or Xbox. I really don't see that. Uh, because the, the install base is just not there. It's not there in any way, shape, or form. Even though they're offering it free at this point. You just pay, I think, for the controller. Uh, and then the games. So, um, again, the other big thing is that we can't forget and overlook is that there's no physical medium option. There's no box that they offered that you could attach to the service where you can either play disc or even keep your game saved digitally in that box. So that you, the person that's the consumer as us would feel ownership and be more secured about it. So in case there's an outage and you, you had no internet connection, you can still access and have accessibility to your titles. There was no guarantee with that. So that's also a big turnoff. And the, another big factor in which I think turned people away and didn't really convince them that Stadia was a good option. Plus, let's give, you know, let's be real. Microsoft's cloud service is basically what they're offering, and they're way ahead of the game. And they're, you know, every game that you have is attached to your account. You don't got to buy in games individually if you already own them. You have ownership, either physical or digital, at all times in any device, anywhere you go. So it's a big, big difference and a big, a big seller in a lot of ways, because they also run them with dedicated servers. So um, it's a shame because it's always nice to have more competition and more options, of course. But at the same time, it's it just shows proof, like years past with companies like Panasonic with the 3DO, with Philips CDI, right, from Philips, with uh, companies like um, uh, NEC with TurboGrafx, um, trying to think what else off the top of my head, Neo Geo even with their console. It just goes to show you that it's not as simple as saying, we have money, we're gonna buy developers and we're just gonna get in the space of gaming and do whatever we want. Uh, just like becoming a boxer or becoming a musician in the music world or becoming an uh, astronaut. You just can't do that. Um, it's not that simple. Or getting in the movie industry, become, making a movie studio. That just doesn't work that way. It takes a lot of uh, not only manpower and, 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 knowledge and money, but it you have to bring something that's never been offered or at least something appealing that's new to the consumer and the audience because if you don't then you're not going to get the have have the attraction from those customers looking from the outside in because for me being so comfortable and so well invested and so well protected under the microsoft banner i don't have no reason to play on stadia you see what i'm saying because i'm still playing the games at a better quality I still own them. I have owner, you know, the freedom of ownership digitally and physically. There's no tie-ins. I take all my things with me from with backwards compatibility, for example. I also take all my peripherals. I don't have to rebuy anything. Those are all things. Plus, I have security, dedicated servers, so forth and so forth. So many options. So you know, and Game Pass, obviously. So if it's it's just somewhere where. You're already getting everything you want and need at the highest quality with the best consumer service options that you don't see a need to go somewhere else. Even on PlayStation, you have way more better options. You understand? Even though they may not be as close as it is on, let's say, the way it is on Xbox. And, you know, I would say Nintendo, but Nintendo makes you buy everything all over, so I can't really say that them either. They're they're a little bit shady as well and anti-consumer, but that's neither here or there. Uh, you know, that's just how they work and no one ever calls them out. Uh, which is horrible, but it is what it is. So yeah, guys, that's what I wanted to talk about. That's what I wanted to say. It's a very quick, short video on my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you agree with what I said, if you disagreed, if you um, understand where I'm coming from, 
If you have other thoughts of your own that you want to add on to what I said, you know, leave a thumbs up. If you like, thumbs down. If you dislike, let me know. Uh, like I said, share it with someone you think might want to see the video and enjoy it. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you for stopping by. If you subscribe, thank you so much. Because I know you didn't have to, but since you did, it means the world to me. And I consider you part of my family. You guys can always find me on social media, on Twitter, under Ebot, Powerful Gamer. Or you can find me on Instagram, under C underscore respect. Or on Xbox, under Ebot 8. And on the Switch, I'm Himare, and the PlayStation, I'm Alfel from Sky. As always, you guys know that my channel's small. I still don't have even a thousand subscribers. I'm trying to get to 900. I'm doing a giveaway right now. Remember, everybody is included, especially new members. Um, help me with that road in any way, shape, or form so everything comes out of my pocket. And I know I do this at my own choice. I'm not saying nobody told me what to do. Um, but if you guys want to help me out in any way, shape, or form from the kindness of your heart, it will be very well appreciated, and you guys know how to do it. It's all down in the description below. Just like if you want to donate anything that you want me to review or take a look at or showcase, it would be my pleasure. I'll be more than happy to do so. It would be an honor to do that. Just DM me, and we'll work out the particulars. So as always, guys, Hebot signing off. See you in the next one, guys. Keep it gaming. Xbox for life. Like a sickness that can't be cured. That's my saying. That's my slogan. Don't get triggered, people. It's all gaming. It's all in good fun. Let's see if we can... So Here we go real quick. Like I was saying, it's all in good fun. I had a little interruption in the camera. Sorry about that. Uh, so I'll see you guys in the next one. Love you. Peace and bye-bye.